Hello and welcome to another episode of Sleeping Giant here and we're back in the Premier League of course. If you were just in the last episode, we beat Liverpool 2-1 away on the first game of the season. What a result that was. Tried a new tactic and it worked perfectly. New signings working great as well. And then we beat Bournemouth at home 2-0 to maintain our unbeaten record during my time here at Blackburn which stems to, well, from last season. And if you've joined us today, let's give you a little catch-up of what's been going on. First of all, we've got two big games coming up today for you. Two Premier League games at home, Crystal Palace and Sheffield United. And as I referred to in the last episode, if we want to stay up, these are games we need to really pick up points from. So minimum four points is what I'm expecting or hoping for in this game anyway. Certainly at least one win. Otherwise, if we don't win either, I think we're in a bit of trouble this year. And sandwiched in the middle of that is the Wolves away in the EFL Cup third round which we'll just skip over that one. Just the Premier League games are more important for us this season. Not bothered about the Cup at all. But just to show you what's been going on since you was last with us, we went away to Leicester City. We were shown this is going to be a tough league. It should have been, could have been four or five really, but we narrowly, well, it was a narrow scoreline, but we did get battered. 1-0, we got battered 1-0. And then we played Rochdale at home in the EFL Cup, which only a 1-0 victory. We did play a kind of, a weakened side really so we snuck through Fabio Silva getting his second goal for us there and then we drew it home to Brighton and I mean if you look at this Brighton we're ahead from half an hour mark and it took us to the 80th minute to actually to actually pull level in that game but we played really really well in this game should have won it and it was nice to keep the unbeaten home record which hopefully doesn't go today and today then we have got a big game first up with Palace who I didn't even see where they started uh, how they started this year doesn't matter anyway and I haven't changed the tactics let's sh have a look here I think this will be all right it's just a quick simple switch of tactics and yes we will go with this Niambe has got a slight injury but is he's already pretty much back in training so we are going to risk him in this game and we're going to keep this line up and hopefully we can pick up three points here against Palace it will be a massive Massive three points, really. And, and it's just the idea is just to try and just build a bit of momentum, keep ourselves away from that bottom three as much as possible this season. And let's tell them we expect to see a much better performance. I didn't even go over the Manchester United game with you, did I? Just completely decided not to talk to you about that one. Well, we got hammered 3 0 in that one. And it should have been a lot more, need I say, more on that one. 3-0 was quite respectable in the end and as you can see they've won 6 out of 6 to start the season Manchester United started very well and we don't expect to pick up points there at all and here is there any other players on the pitch? yes there is I thought it was just the uh, Palace keeper then here's Zaha coming forward now for Palace get stuck in on him well done exactly what I wanted here's Bogar we're going we're going to try and play the same system as we come up with at home we should be positive at home this is where we should be picking up the majority of our points Bradley Dack Lovely ball to Niambe. Niambe back to Holby. Holby strikes. It's blocked. You're going to have to excuse my voice a little bit today. It's a little bit croaky for whatever reason. So if, it, if I sound a bit different, that's why. Here's Dak. Niambe. Back to Bradley Dak. Buckley now picking out. Patient build up here from Blackburn. Lovely strike from Holby. It's off the post. Can Bogo get there? He can't. Down into header straight to Guayata in goal. Good start from us. Dominating early proceedings. Six shots in the opening 13 minutes. Lovely start that. Let's hope we can keep it up. And we're going to tell the boys to get creative. We want to keep building chances. Making chances, sorry. Ten shots in the opening 20 minutes. Albeit two shots on target. So the story... It kind of shows you a story of this game, really. Here's Bogar now into the box. Bradley Dak looking to put one in. Fabio Silva is blocked again by Jones. Is that Phil Jones for, Man uh, for Crystal Palace? Anyway, here comes Zaha and Adebayaro again is in there. That does look like Phil Jones there for Crystal Palace. Half an hour gone pretty much here in this game, and it is still Blackburn nil, Palace nil. We'll be very disappointed if we come into this. Going at half time at 0 0, especially where we're dominating. And Palace are now down to 10 men. Luka Milivojevic has been given his marching orders for a poor challenge. Here's Tosin, all the way back to the Jack Butland in our goal. Solid start for Butland. He's made some fantastic saves in the first few games. Here's Bradley Dack out wide to Niambe. We've really got to press on and win this game, haven't we? This is a huge opportunity today. And here's Lewis Holtby. It's a poor ball, that. 
Holtby having to run near back to his halfway line there to fetch that ball. Here's Holtby into Bell. Just about keeps it in there. Here's Holtby. Lovely ball in looking for Silver. Can't find him now. Zaha's going to look to break here for Crystal Palace. Oh, it's a typical Palace goal this on the break, isn't it? Here is Zaha. Good strike, but it's straight at Jack Butland. Oh, it's felt non-stop this, this game. It really has. 15 shots. We should be ahead in this game. Pretty much just less than one in three shots are on target. That's not good enough. It really isn't good enough. We have hit the woodwork, albeit. But we need to be doing more. Holtby strike and poor goalkeeping for Giatta has put us in front. 1-0 up here at Palace. We said we'd be disappointed if we didn't have the lead. And we do have the lead. Fantastic goal by Holtby. The keeper should have done a lot better there. Let's have another look at that. Bogar on the ball here. Plays it across to Holtby. And look at that lovely strike. But yeah, it's a real, real poor goalkeeping there from Palace. And But we do deservedly lead. And... If it stays like this, we'll be in the top six tonight. Happy days. Palace now on the break. Zaha, that man again. But we keep... We're defending Zaha well, dare I say. He's probably going to batter us in the second half now. But we've defended him well. Here's Bogar now. It'd be nice to go 2-0 up just before half-time. Here's Stuart Downing on the ball. Plays it out wide to Niambi. Holtby now. Back to Buckley. Patient build-up again from us. Working all right, though. Here's Bell. Gets in the box well. Look at that bell. Plays it back here. Bradley Dack 2-0. Fantastic team goal that was. Brilliant build-up play from us. Thoroughly deserved 2-0 lead. To create 18 chances in the first half in the, Premier, in the Premier League as a newly promoted side is fantastic. This is like Man City stuff, this is. Lovely ball back there, Dak. Lovely finish. Griata had no chance with that one. You can't blame the keeper there. And we deservedly lead. We're currently fifth in the Premier League. Amazing stuff. We'll be six points ahead of the bottom three as it stands. That's all I'm looking at this season. It's just staying up. And let's tell them... Don't let your performance levels drop. Which hope he didn't seem to like that. He seemed to lose confidence there. And that... You're tuning up, Lewis. Chill out. Chill out, man. You're a Premier League player now. You're fifth in the Premier League. Stays like this, you're in Europe. Chill out, son. 54 minutes gone. No, he's now calm. He just heard me say that. He's now calm. Just looking at that Palace team. Not a lot of change. I don't know who Kozawa is. Whether he was already at Palace. Obviously, Phil Jones is in there as well. But instead of concentrating on the Palace team, I need to be concentrating on my own team because we need to make a change here. Well, we don't need to, but we, we kind of need to to keep fitness levels okay. We're going to bring off Buckley. Bring on Davenport, the guy from our youth system, which I mentioned to you in the last episode. And I'm going to bring Armstrong on as well. Silver is having a poor game out there. It's only fair Armstrong has a crack of it as well. He could do with a Premier League goal. Even though Silver was the big money signing technically. We want to show Armstrong that, yep, we still have faith in you. You was fantastic for us last season. And we have faith in you to score Premier League goals as well. As we approach the 80th minute here, Sheffield United we have up next in the Premier League, losing 2-0 at home to Aston Villa. Hopefully that will be a nice three points for us there. We are absolutely creating a lot of chances, having a lot of possession here. We look like an established Premier League team today. But we have got to remember Palace are down to 10 men. But before that, we were battering them as well. And that is a great result for us. Gets us on our way. And very good win. Hopefully we can get through against Wolves. I'm not too bothered, as I said. I'd usually show you the cup game. But this year is all about the Premier League. Unless we get to the final. Let's tell Holtby. You were superb. Hopefully he feels a bit better than calm now after the half-time team talk. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll bring you back for Sheffield United next. So just before we take you to the Sheffield United at home game, let's just run through what happened in that Wolves Cup game. First half was absolutely fantastic. We went in 1-0 down because of a Adama Troyere header just before half-time. But it all went wrong in the second half. Um, Butland, who I've just been praising earlier on in the episode about being very solid, 
he dropped the ball in a six yard box and Traore had a tap in so not ideal after the team talk we just gave them about playing well and being unlucky we was 2-0 down then we was 3-0 down and then we started a light fight, uh, a late fight back um, we brought on the big boys we brought on Silva, Bogar and Roth no Rankin Costello we brought on um, did we bring on Rankin Costello? Oh, I can't remember Buckley Buckley it was and Buckley and Bogar both come on and scored goals but Buckley's just a little bit late and we run out of time and we I think another two or three minutes we might have pulled it back to 3-3 but it wasn't to be and we're out of the cup but it's not the end of the world now we're on to bigger and more important things to Sheffield United who are currently 12th in the league let's look at actually at how they're doing they're 12th three points behind us a win for us today could potentially take us back up into the Champions League places. Quiet, Dan. Do it quietly. We have had to make up the changes from that Crystal Palace game. Butland in goal. Bell, Lenihan, Adarabayo, Inyambi, Buckley and Stuart Downing is the ball player midfield. Box to box midfielder, sorry. Um, news on that. Holtby is out for four to five weeks. Yeah, three to five weeks, sorry. Uh, with knee cartilage problems so he's out that's a massive loss he started the season very well indeed one of our better players Bogar, Dak and Armstrong there out on the right replacing where Downing would play and Silva up top so Armstrong kind of gets a chance now in the Premier League albeit in the inside forward role rather than the out and out striker where he scored a ton of goals for us last season I've decided to change him but here we go big game for us today as I said earlier, it is a game which we need to be looking at taking points from if we're going to have hopes of staying in the Premier League this year. And I mean, I would have taken four points at the start of the episode, um, but we need to go for six, really. And I just want to keep my unbeaten home record, really. That's what I want. It'd be amazing if we can go through the whole season when we eventually, or hopefully if we eventually win the Premier League with Blackburn, and I've stayed, remained unbeaten in the league, I must say, at home, because we did lose to Wigan last season I think it was Wigan in the League Cup let's see how good your memories are was it Wigan without going put in the comments let me know if it was Wigan in the Cup without going back and looking lovely ball in as a header oh it's just over by Tosin lovely opportunity for us there we started very well again just like the Crystal Palace game all the possession all the shots only two on target early in the game though we just need to learn to take our chances just taking a little look at the Sheffield United team. They've got Philip Benkovic there from Leicester. Trossard from Brighton. Gamero up front. Harry Wilson on the bench. Not a bad side they're assembling there. Chris Wilde and his team. Niambe is taking a knock. That's not ideal. And that's not a good ball, is it? And Buckland, why, why, Butland, why is Butland not coming out for that? Kevin Gamero gets his first of the season. And it's a complete defensive balls up, really. Look at this. Butland out to Tosin. This is a £92 million rated Manchester City centre-back, guys. And judging by that, he's not £92 million worth. If they want £92 million again in the summer, I'm going to record that clip and show them. I'm going to send that to Pep and go, you must be joking. After a good start in the game, really, look at that. It's typical. We gifted them that one chance. They've had no possession whatsoever and... They're going to find themselves one in love at half time unless we can get an equaliser just before half time. And that's what Bell's doing, trying to do for us. And there is Bell. What a poor effort. He did all the hard work. Why not square it? That really frustrates me with this game. Why not square that cross goal? And Silver's got a tap in. Honestly. Honestly, honestly, honestly. And we are going to tell them aggressively to show me something else in that second half because. I wouldn't have been so angry if it wasn't if it was nil nil because we've dominated it. But the fact is, sloppy mistake, and you can't afford to do that in the Premier League, and it's cost us. Here's Bell, lovely ball into Silva, Fabio Silva, and the aggression has paid off because one minute and twenty seconds into the second half, Fabio Silva has netted an equaliser. It's more beautiful play by Bell. Look at this, Bogar and Bell getting a bit of a. Nice little relationship down there, although he didn't pass it back to Bell Boga. But lovely run into the box and a great header from Fabio Silva. Game on. 1-1. One, one. Let's tell the boys. Can I tell them anything? To keep getting creative. We've had all the chances. Keep being creative, boys, and surely we'll score another one without making stupid errors. Would be preferable. 
55 minutes gone, one at a piece here. It'd be nice to get our fourth win of the season in this game, in the league that is. But highlight for Sheffield United, lovely ball in by Freeman. There's a header and Benkovic, the former Leicester City man, has nodded it home. But this is going to VAR and we know when it goes to VAR, it's never given, is it? Goal disallowed. Oh, clearly offside. Clearly offside. Saw that from a mile off. I hate VAR. hate it. I'm so pleased, though, that Football Manager did include it in their game this season. Unlike FIFA, they couldn't be bothered to include it. Unless they updated it from the last time I played it. But, yeah, they just couldn't be bothered, could they? Um, let's make a substitution here. Armstrong is having a mare out on the right there. So, do we make a change in midfield? Can Rothwell play on the right? He sure can. Can Boga play on the right? Ooh, interesting. Boga and Rothwell. Niambi still has that knock, but we've kept him on the whole game. It seems a bit pointless to bring him off now. And we'll go with that. I'm happy with that. Let's see how Boga fares on the right. Because if Stuart Downing's got to play in the middle for the foreseeable future, probably for the next five weeks, we might have to use Bogart out on the right. And before I tell them to get creative again or demand more from them, let's see where this highlight gets us a lovely ball in, cleared away. Are we going to pick it up? Lenihan plays it out wide to Bell. Bell now going to attack that fullback. He does so well. Bell strikes straight at the Sheffield United keeper. Lovely opportunity again. If only he could finish, Bell, he'd be absolutely superb, wouldn't he? Oh, I forgot to shout out to the players. I am going to tell them to show a bit of passion in this final 15 minutes. Hopefully that will get us over the line. It is still one each here. And just a reminder, Sheffield United did have a disallowed goal from an offside of Philippe Benkovic's header. Is Benkovic still on the pitch? They've gone to three at the back or were they already three at the back? I have no idea. Five minutes left here. We are going to go attacking. And let's hope we can... As soon as I go attacking, look at this highlight. And I'm going to tell them to get creative regardless. Because if it's 1-1 one, one, or 2-1 or we're 2 one down, we'll need to get creative to score goals. Can we force them into a mistake here? Here's O'Connell for Sheffield United. Back to Philippe Benkovic. And is it... Oh, I thought Silva had it. I thought he had it and he's going to be through on goal. That was the opportunity. If only had a bit more composure there. You obviously lost a bit of balance. Here comes Sheffield United again. Luckily still have the ball. O'Connell. Can we force them into another mistake? Lovely ball out wide here to Stevens, who's going to skim Niambe all day long, which unfortunately is a good strike, but it's straight at Butland. Fullbacks don't seem to be able to finish in this game today. One minute left. Three minutes of added on time. Can we conjure up a last gasp winner? It doesn't look like it. It looks like it's going to be full time. And it is. Drop points, dropped points. If you look at the stats and the way we started the game and the goal we conceded, it really is drop points. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna remain positive with them, with them and say I was delighted you come back and salvage the draw. Because to be honest, a newly promoted club make a mistake like that, it could the floodgates could be open. It wasn't, and we are. Still unbeaten at home, which is the main thing. And we've got a tough game against Southampton. But let's take a look at the league table now. We're about seven games in. We are comfortably in seventh place in the league. Four points outside the Champions League spots. Just outside the Europa League spots on goal difference. More importantly, we are six points currently clear of the bottom three. And it will remain that way because everyone's played seven games down there in the bottom three. Just the same as us. So a very good solid start to the season. I'm very happy with that one. A bit of inconsistent form here, as you can see, but we did play Manchester United in there. Let's just avoid, not worry about that one at all. So really, it's a good, it's a good run of games. Good, good, good start to the season. Absolutely delighted with that. So we now will play a good few games, and who is going to be in and around us, which is worth bringing you back for? Probably. Let's have a look here. Ah, right, see, I was going to think, I was thinking about Wolves and West Brom. But then Brentford's not too far after. Where are Brentford in the league? They're 11th. They've had a good start as well. I'm going to bring you back, guys, for Villa away and Brentford in December. I think that's fair enough. There's a chunk of games in there. Tottenham, Man City, Arsenal. We're probably going to get absolutely destroyed in them. So I'd rather not show them. Although you never know. We did beat Liverpool away. But I think other games are a little bit too soon. It will slow down the progression of this series. So, yeah, we'll bring you back for Villa away and Brentford at home 
because they're going to be teams again in and around us, and I think that's more important to show you, give us an idea, give you an idea of how we're getting on realistically in the league without losing like five nil to City, six nil to Arsenal, and so on. So two big games there. If you did enjoy that though, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And we'll see you next time for two more big Premier League games for Blackburn Rovers in our bid to stay in the Premier League this season. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.